Moving on to annoying things, um, especially for people when they're going through, because, you know, for whatever reason nowadays, it feels like, I don't know, society, we just lack compassion. People don't really have any way of understanding how another person is feeling, how they got to that point, um, why they snapped. It's always quick judgment about, oh, you're good, you're bad. It's too much black and white thinking. Um, usually for people you don't know which I understand but you know we know people within our own orbit within our own circle of friends who go through crazy shit and we're a bit more forgiving to them I think you should be as forgiving to people that you don't know because you know we're going through stuff too that you don't know about one example of this is this issue currently going on with the dear Ari Lennox if I go here on screen oh no why is it doing this for I don't know why it's doing this for okay now it's doing is that it why is it doing that for? Okay, doesn't matter. Oh, this is annoying, isn't it? This is annoying. This is annoying. Okay, so. All right, let's just let's do this this way. Anyway, yeah. So this is a, a little news article courtesy of The Root regarding Ari Lennox recent um meltdown or freak out on social media it happens quite often but this one i think is maybe a sign that there is maybe more to it than meets the eye so the headline says as follows i'm done and tired here's why Ari lennox wants to be dropped from her label um it says the following it appears things aren't going too smoothly for american's favorite shape but a baby aka Ari lennox who recently revealed her desire to be dropped from her label following a recent podcast interview that went viral of the weekend compass reports that during her combo with south african podcaster mac g let's see the actual interview and why she's so angry she just says i'm just like basically the quote no let's just clip play the clip and then we'll read the rest of the article and where we at right now is someone right now oh my married? god whoa there <laughs> um i'm not happy whoa that's a wild question <laughs> why that way why access it that way whoa because <laughs> that's what you say in the song you know what i mean i oh, love that part <laughs> <laughs> when, did say, when did I say that? I said that song? Yeah, don't you remember that song? I do, but I don't remember. I don't, I didn't, oh, I guess I did say that. I did say that. Okay. <laughs> right. Let me, um, okay, you just threw, you caught me off guard there, but uh, I did say that, but no, I'm. So clearly she wasn't too fond of somebody um, speaking to her in that way, especially in the podcast. It seems a bit of a, bit of a doofy lame move to do do you know what i mean but i guess he was trying to be funny uh da, 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 da. what she said so her response was to that interview obviously after the fact i'm just like why was i alone on a call full of people why didn't anyone intervene and why wasn't parts of the interview destroyed like the team promised why did it happen to begin with i just feel slow and ambushed and blindsided it continues just because i'm how happily and freely sing right about sex doesn't make any kind of creepy disrespect warranted i clearly was in immense shock and i hate that i didn't didn't react differently but fuck it i don't want anyone feeling sorry for me i'm tired of the narrative exhausted i'm good i promise but so far interview but as for as for interviews i'm not doing them anymore there's enough lives and interviews out there already next one I've been my most uh, happiest creating music and exploring life sober. I'm not allowing anything to tamper with my peace anymore. Honestly, it's all my karma. So clearly she wasn't too fond of it. She didn't like the whole narrative being spun about it. Like she just complains. People obviously getting on her about it. And in general, I just think what's happening here is that it seems like to me, this is a bit of a cry for help. She clearly isn't handling fame um, well. It's not something that she kind of uh, responds to the best, especially when the, I guess it's difficult. No, I guess it's different when the reaction you're getting is somewhat negative, when people are criticizing you and pointing things out. Because I think everyone can can kind of receive praise and love and adulation, right? It's, even if it's coming at you really, really fast from all different directions, right? Um, for sure, everyone can handle that. But when people start to pick apart things, overanalyze your lyrics, overanalyze your looks, what you say, how you stand, the things you do, where you go, then it becomes a bit of a problem because not everyone's built for that. And that's no shame in that. There is no shame in that at all. I think everyone's got their talents. Everyone's got their gifts. And I think part of the reason why you'd want to be a signed artist, right? And you want to be on a record label is because it provides you with infrastructure you would imagine to obviously promote and market your music, but also provide you with infrastructure that would not put you in a situation where you could get ambushed and somebody could ask you such a cheeky question that you weren't really expecting. Because I'm a spec I'm, I assume this interview 
wasn't prepped prior. She had no research. There was no research by her team done in terms of finding out who this South African podcaster was because I'm sure if they would have done it, they would have found out quite quickly that he's a little bit of a troll. Maybe he likes to shit post a bit. Maybe he likes to wind people up a bit. That's part of his brand. And maybe they would have said, hey, because of how we know how sensitive that she is, maybe we shouldn't let her go on that show or maybe don't go on her own. Maybe we make that show with another up and coming artist or something. I don't know, whatever. Or maybe just choose somebody else to do the interview with. But I could also understand the pressure on her side, feeling like she has to, you know, uh, do her obligations as a signed artist or fulfill obligations as a signed artist in order to try and break a new market. Because I imagine, I assume the reason why she's doing a random podcast with the South African dude is because they were planning for her to do some sort of South African tour. So that was basically the idea. Let's break you in, you know, one of the places where they're English speaking, where maybe they kind of listen to your music already due to what they've got. You know, they've got a lot of um, analytics on the back end. They can check to find out where she's basically listened to a lot outside of North America. They probably spotted South Africa, blah, blah, blah it makes sense but i think in this case her team failed her clearly i also think in her own sense there needs to be more of um there needs to be more responsibility taken to make sure that she just doesn't do these random interviews i don't think it's necessary for somebody of her level especially considering that she does Insta remember when i was on instagram live she used to always be on live like every other day she'd be on the live doing something right and i guess it's just a medium that she feels comfortable in because you can essentially just like i'm doing now rant at people that are viewing you you don't really need to receive too much feedback and you can just ignore it if you don't want to or block people so it's pretty cool sort of platform to use if you're somebody that doesn't necessarily feel too comfortable being asked questions by people you don't, you don't know too tough so i get that but if you are our Lennox, you could easily just do interviews or sorry you could easily do like instagram lives ahead of an ep on album drop or a tour announcement that would do probably as much if not more numbers than if you sat down with like a radio station or a podcast like why would you do that and if you did go on a podcast go somewhere where you celebrate um go to a platform that maybe promotes r&b music a platform that's spoken well about you in the past and you're going to get a far better interview it's going to be a far host far less hostile environment and it's also going to be a great way for you to kind of, you know, gain new, gain new fans, maybe expand your audience, whatever it may be. I think that might be a better way to go about things. But I don't necessarily think it's something to kind of beat her over over the head with. I don't think it's her being complainy or whiny because I think she replied to somebody here who said, oh, you're always complaining. She says, yeah, complain. I'm complaining about shit. I'm going through. Meanwhile, in real life, you're just as happy as and as effed up. Um, you cry in a car too. Somebody calling you insensitive and dramatic too. You can never be honest about your, your demons. And that's not true, to be honest. I think some people deal with stress and um, conflict easier than others. It just is what it is. It doesn't mean one person's better than the other. It's just some people are a little bit more you know resolute and have ways to kind of go about and deal with those things and not be too um and, and not let it get to let not let not let it get them too down but if you are that person that does get easily triggered by that sort of stuff you need to have a team around you that can somewhat um protect you and shield you from it and act as a filter so it doesn't come through to you but it also all this sort of stuff it also makes me think and it also kind of um reminds me why certain people like you know i think of somebody like a frank ocean even the weekend why they're so hesitant to do interviews in the first place because when you're an artist especially a true artist at the pinnacle right like aerodynamics i'd say is the pinnacle in terms of an r&b artist right part of the reason why you're so good at what you do and why you're so talented and why you can sing so amazingly and you can write so amazingly is because you're sensitive that sensitivity that kind of um oh that kind of dramaticness that overreact that overreaction that you have to everything um that you're doing a lot uh that tmi is the reason why people resonate with your music they resonate with your art because you're able to connect with people through the words that you're able to sing or through the emotion you're able to kind of um imbue in the music that you make of course but also in a negative side of things when somebody says something to you of color it can completely throw you off I'm pretty sure her entire week has been ruined by that one interview. Do you know what I mean? That one thing that guy said offhandly as a joke has probably made her question many, many things. She already mentioned him being sober. So I'm sure maybe, you know, the, the, I'm not sure. I, I would assume it's probably a recent thing. Maybe the alcohol situation was affecting her prior. Like that one little comment could do that. But on the other side of things, she's able to kind of tap into her emotion and her sensitivity to make hit records that girls sing or use as captions on their Instagram pictures. It's the kind of um, pros and cons of that sensitivity as an artist. 
but I think also it's not something that people should take advantage of. You know what I mean? It's it's like, and that's a that's the sad thing about it because I feel like I I've seen an article about Ari Lennox and cr complaining or crying about a label every other week, and it feels like nothing ever changes. So clearly, her label or the music industry at large doesn't care about her mental health, doesn't care how she feels at all. They just kind of leave her to her own devices, which I guess is somewhat consistent because other artists too, who maybe are struggling with drugs or abusive relationships or whatnot, they also get left on their own unless they've got a good team around them. So it goes to show that the music industry by and large is an incredibly, incredibly horrible industry to work in. You know what I mean, really, really horrible industry to work in. Like everyone just wants to extract value from you because you're able to pay for their kids' private school, right? Or you're able to cover their mortgage. But when it comes to actually caring about you as a person, they don't care. They have no care in the world. They just want you to turn in albums, perform shows, tap dance, you know, whatever it may be, and then keep it moving. They won't want you to have any emotions. They don't want you to be an actual person. Um, which is why I'm surprised a lot more labels don't actually just take away the ability for their artists to post on their own social media feed. I'm surprised they don't just have it automated, where right? they just kind of get you to post stuff, they get you to go to post, they get you to take pictures in a professional studio, everything is planted, they only release, they only put stuff on your social that has to do with your music. I'm surprised more labels don't do that. They just let their artists run free on social, I guess in the hope that you say something messed up, because then that will then add to the streams, which obviously adds to their ability to pay their bills and go on fancy holidays. But yeah, man, it's sad to see. To be honest, I'm not going to lie. I don't. I, I didn't like her freaking out that online, talking about wanting to be dropped from a label again, talking about not wanting to do this, not wanting to do that. Because unfortunately, too, the internet people just don't take responsibility. If she comes out tomorrow, it look. God forbid anything drastic happens to her and she, you know, self expires. No one's going to be taking responsibility. No one's. No one will ever accept the role that they played in driving her to that point. But everyone's happy to kind of stand by the sidelines and laugh. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like nah, I'm not for that. I'm not for that.